In this presentation, we're going to take a look at basic wireless security. Wireless network signals are broadcast using signals similar to the same radio waves that you receive on AM and FM radio. Obviously, this is going to be less secure than a wired network because the signal is traveling through the air instead of on a closed wire loop. Your most basic wireless signal is sent completely unencrypted. Therefore, the traffic can be captured and the packets can be analyzed. The information contained within is often sent in clear text and can easily be read. You should always use encryption when using wireless so you'll have better security. Your SSID is where your wireless network begins. It's the name that your router broadcasts and the name you see in Windows when you uh, go to your network locations and you'll see list of wireless networks. This is most often set in your router's web configuration screens. Your Wi-Fi card simply detects the broadcast and adds it to your list. Some people hide their SSID in an attempt to increase their network security, but this doesn't really work. The SSID is sent every time a user connects, so if someone is listening, the next time you connect, they'll just grab the name. Also, programs like Kismet and Insider log active SSID names. They can just leave these scanners running and it will make a list of all the ones, including the hidden ones. Without encryption, all they need to connect is that name. The most basic type of encryption for your wireless network is WEP, sometimes called WEP. This was the first encryption made specifically for Wi-Fi, and it was developed at the same time that Wi-Fi was developed. As such, it's been around for quite a while, and the government limited the strength of encryptions available to the public at the time of its development. Therefore, it only uses 64 bits of encryption. While that was very secure at the time, modern computers can easily brute force through those levels of encryption. Plus, there are known weaknesses which make brute force even a moot point. Because the keys are relatively short and they are sent in every packet, the traffic can be monitored. Once enough packets are seen, the key can be determined. This is why WEP was listed as a security risk by security professionals ever since 2004. Also, WEP is not supported for wireless N networks. With wireless N, if you're using it properly, you're either using WPA, WPA2, or no encryption at all. WPA and WPA2 use similar methods of encryption. WPA2 is obviously the sequel to WPA, and it increased the security from 128 bits up to 256. Both methods of encryption are much stronger than WEP. They use rotating keys so that the same trick used to grab the key out of the packets does not apply to WPA and WPA2. WPA2 is the strongest of the encryptions and it uses a cipher called CCMP that is based on the same AES encryptions that's used to secure your online banking and credit card transactions. Because the encryption is so strong, WPA2 is highly resistant to brute force attacks. Of course, no method is completely secure. WPA and even the strongly encrypted WPA2 are highly vulnerable to dictionary attacks. A dictionary attack occurs when a list of keywords is entered one at a time to try to gain access to your secured network. If you have used a simple password, or more correctly, a key, and this key is contained in a common word list, then no amount of security will help you. Also, the original WPA can be tricked with small system packets. These packets, such as ARP and PING, can insert small amounts of data into your system. While not exactly a weakness, WPA and WPA2 use your SSID in the encryption key. Therefore, it's important to change your SSID from the default names because people who try to hack into your network will put in 
all of the common SSIDs as options. Also, there's some software made specifically for cracking into wireless networks. Most of the software is Linux based. As a matter of fact, Backtrack Linux is a collection of Linux programs that was designed specifically for network penetration by security professionals. This software can be used by almost anyone to easily crack WEP and weak passworded WPA. The most common application in Backtrack is Aircrack. Aircrack allows you to easily detect WPA and WEP handshakes faster. It has a ton of other features that we won't go into here, but needless to say, if you have a weak network, Aircrack will give someone the key. There is a Windows version of Aircrack, but it's not well supported. A new program called Aircrack on steroids will work in Windows. It's going to maintain a database of common passwords and SSID salts. This is why it's becoming more and more important to use strong network keys. The reason you need to use strong keys is because there is a known practice called war driving. It's basically people driving around scanning networks for SSID signals that they can log into. War drivers use homemade antennas and powerful cards to reach far beyond the listed 300 feet broadcasting on most routers. They can use these strong antennas and network cards to steal your internet access or sometimes even worse, hack into your network. These war drivers are nearly impossible to track if they do it correctly because while there are log files that let you know that they've been there, most of them know how to spoof their credentials or change their network addresses and MAC addresses so that you'll never know who exactly was in your system. This is some examples of the kinds of antennas that war drivers use. We have a wok which is basically using a Chinese cooking apparatus as a parabolic reflector, a backquad in the middle, which is eight bins of wire specifically tuned to pick up 2.4 gigahertz wireless, and a cantana, which is a directional antenna made from a juice can. These antennas are very cheap to make and easy to use, and they've been used to detect signals for great distances. When combined with larger reflective dishes, they've been known to capture signals for up to 10 miles. If you would like to use one of these antennas, I can't stress enough that you need to use good cables. It doesn't matter how strong your antenna is if you attach it to a cable that it's not made for carrying radio signals. In closing, I'll add that everyone needs to secure their Wi-Fi. It's probably a good idea to check your logs occasionally to make sure there's no unauthorized traffic. And if you attempt to use any of the software or antenna shown here, be ethical with your hacking. Use it to extend your own networks to further in your own yard. Don't go steal the internet from other people.